Rugby, real simple. You get the white thing, you run towards the edge. If someone wearing a different colored shirt than you're wearing has the white thing, knock the shit out of them. If someone wearing the same colored shirt has the white thing, foul. Better to hit somebody and be aggressive than be passive and look like a schmuck. Out of my way, out of my day, out of your mind. If they got their hands on the ball and they're underneath you, these things here get to go all over them. I'll have both my ears sewn on. Oh, that sounds kind of fun. Damn! People are shocked when they hear about a gay rugby team, certainly because it plays against type. There are stereotypes of what gay men are supposed to be and aren't supposed to be. You get guys that are kind of stereotypically, you know, gay. Oh, thank God I got my pink wig. It's funny until they put the most devastating hit on you that you've gotten, and then you just kind of wipe the smile off your face. I think the reason rugby has become very popular among gay men has to do a lot with rugby's place as a countercultural sport, a sport without the baggage that comes with football culture in high school that may have traumatized some gay men. An amazing sense of pride that I can play rugby and still hold my head high as a gay man. One really important thing to remember is that there are gay players on every team in the world. It's just a lot of times their fellow teammates don't know about it. You ought to be a man or you might as well be dude. United 93, clear for takeoff. Imagine that. I could see a magical thing happen and I could see my son grow every time he played rugby. And I think that those rugby skills carried Mark through right up to the moment of his death. I think it's significant that Tom Burnett, a football quarterback, and Todd Beamer, a basketball star in high school, Jeremy Glick, a rugby player, Mark Bingham, a rugby player, pulled it together on Flight 93 on September 11th, used the skills they learned in the field of competition. Even though they weren't able to save their own lives, they saved hundreds of lives on the ground. After 9-11, Mark Bingham's story really inspired people. He represented something that people wanted to be a part of. When facts of his life started coming about, there started to be this question, well, rugby, what is rugby? And so within gay communities, a chance to explore what it is that brought up this depth of character and courage in this man, uh, that gave a platform for the development of gay rugby. It's so important for athletes like Billy Bean, Martina, Billie Jean King, myself, um, David Copé, to come out and to encourage a lot of these high school kids that you can do it. You know, you can be that football player, that basketball or baseball player, you know, and continue on with their dream. The Bingham Cup was started by the San Francisco Fog after 9-11. We brought teams from all over the world together to honor Mark Bingham and have a great weekend of rugby. You know, Mark was one of the founding brothers. You know, this is all about him. You know, I think this is all about us. In 2002, when we first inaugurated the Bingham Cup, we got eight teams to come to San Francisco. In 2004, when we went to London, there were 20 teams that had evolved and now to see in New York that there will be 30 teams there, it's just an inspiring moment. There's straight guys out here, gay guys, women playing with the guys. I just think it really embodies the spirit of rugby in a big way. I hadn't played any rugby or any contact sport before. I never hung around males or had any male contact, so it's all big learning experience for me. Yeah! I'm sure Mark is smiling down at what the Bingham Cup has become. The fog appeals to everybody. We'll take you as you come, we'll take what we give, and we'll take what you give, you know, and it's a, it's a nice, nice relationship. Man will never know what God has planned, you know, He's, he works in mysterious ways. That could be a reason why I joined the fog, trying not to be judgmental and stuff like that. I'm going to measure how well I did based on how we play. Our job is to paste this logo right through their fucking sternums. Roll
the guys have a belief in where the teams come from. All the guys are playing for a reason. It makes my job a hell of a lot easier as a coach. It doesn't take a lot to get these guys up and ready to play. I think they're all playing for a purpose and they're playing for each other. Convicts has been a really good outlet to, to not have to change myself and be something else to fit in. Let's get the bonus points. Let's work for that. Let's have a goal. Keep it up, boys. Keep it up. Our main team goal this year is to win the big cup, so we're still on track to do that. I haven't come out to my family yet, but hopefully um, winning the Bingham Cup would be a really nice segue into, into telling them. This is your last practice in San Francisco. One week. One week. You have a lot to do in that one week. So I've been busting my butt the last couple of weeks to try to make sure that I get a starting spot when the team goes to New York. And I think I'm next. Pictures asked me to come to the Cannes Film Festival. I told them I'm going to play rugby. <laughs> to the rest of the tournament who's number one. 2004 uh, Bingham Cup, we beat Sydney. Felt like, you know, they were on the five meter line for five or ten minutes, just hammering at us. They're kind of our nemesis at the moment. We're marked. We're definitely marked. We are hell-bent on smashing the fog. This is our cup. We don't care who's got the cup, we just want the fucking cup. 20 minutes of rugby. We've all got it in us. It's big fucking deep here. 20 minutes, boys. This is not personal for us. With you. With you. With you. With you. When I hear people yelling, with you, when they're on the pitch, it reminds me of how Mark used to do that when he was on the pitch. It's like his slogan. With you. 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 With